Hello, folks. Welcome to the 1972 Bassmaster Classic. You can almost hear the guitars and the cowboys singing because we're headed for Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Ray Scott. Welcome to the Classic, live from Chattanooga. This is the Geico Bassmaster Classic. I'm pretty sure this isn't the last time we'll be here in Knoxville, Tennessee. What do you think about that? The 2023 Bassmaster Classic will be the biggest event in all of fishing, and we're here today to get you set for all the action. This year, the World Championship of Bass Fishing is headed to the Tennessee River in Knoxville. The best anglers in the world will all be looking to make their dreams come true with a classic title. Today, we take a look at all the main storylines and big names to watch for when all the action unfolds. This is the 2023 Bassmaster Classic Preview Show. In the mouth. Hug on her! Hug on her! Welcome in. This is the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders, here with Ronnie Moore. We're getting closer and closer to the start of the 23 season, 2023 season for everything Bassmaster. We kick it off with the Elite Series, getting going with two big events down in Florida, Okeechobee and Seminole, but hot on the heels of that. Hey, it's just the most important tournament in the sport of fishing, the World Championship, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. It is life-changing. It is incredible. It's very, very hard to qualify, Ronnie, and it's super hard to win. And this year, like we did in 2019, we're going to a great town on the Tennessee River where they really appreciate bass fishing. Knoxville, Tennessee blew it out in 2019 when we had the classic there. Big numbers, large crowds, and the fishing at this place, there's only a limited history. You know, with 19 for the classic and 2021 for an Elite Series event. But the different time of the year, in, in the spring, Tommy, March, late February, a week or two of weather can make a tremendous difference. One year we saw a lot of flooding in the area. One year we saw a lot of drawdown in effect, yeah. cold weather, warm weather. There's a lot of unpredictable things with this body of water. But at the end of the day, it's the Bassmaster Classic. And like you said, three days to try to win this event. It doesn't matter what game plan you have. Something's going to change in those three days. The pressure could get to you. The expectation can get to you. And those crowds in Knoxville, they'll be cheering you on. But that puts a lot of pressure on your back as well. You know, absolutely. And a lot of times we go to classics in places we've been to and had classics at that time of year many times before, only that 2019 classic we've had there on the Tennessee River at Knoxville and one other event in 2021 and that's not a whole lot of information to draw on so so many different factors as you mentioned there but what a place Fort Loudon and Teleco it's going to be a great venue Tommy talk about a match made in heaven Knoxville Tennessee Bassmaster Classic they kind of go hand in hand you've got a close boat ramp right there on the Tennessee River then you have Thompson Bowling Arena and the Knoxville Convention Centers those two paired so close together this is a match made in heaven for the fans and the anglers you're gonna have close commutes see these big crowds at takeoffs this was one of the most eye-popping spectacles we saw in the 2019 Classic so many people showed up from so many different places across the country to support the Bassmaster Classic and these 55 anglers who have qualified for the Super Bowl of the sport, the biggest event in the sport, and this is a, such a diverse playing field for these anglers to compete on. When you think about this being a river and a lake component, you can stay closer to takeoff where it is actually a river, but this time of the year, those creeks are going to warm up a little bit, those shallow fish are going to be active, and you may need to make a 30 to 45 minute run south to get to where those winning quality fish are. We saw guys like Seth Fighter, Brandon Lester, others really cash in later in in the day with it being a spring event late March we know the days are getting a little longer that time of the year and the more sun that these fish can have to their disposal the more active they're gonna get yeah Ronnie and the Tennessee River is a playing field we know much better this time around much more so than our last classic there in 2019 Tommy, we talked about it a little bit, how this classic could go down, but looking at the numbers here, looking as I expound upon what this fishery looks like, when we look at Fort Loudon and we look at Teleco, they make up the Tennessee River here right in Knoxville. Fort Loudon, much different than Teleco. It's more dirty, it's river-based, and it flows from Cherokee and Douglas, and this time of the year, those lakes are low. A lot of mud banks exposed, that's why the water stays a little more stained. And then when we look at Teleco, Tommy, Teleco was a place that did not factor much in the 2019 Classic, but it factored greatly for the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series event. We saw Jeff Gustafson in the cut through between the two lakes, catching smallmouth to win that. We saw a couple other anglers in the top 10 fishing for smallmouth. And a little bit clearer water, it funnels from the mountains, those river streams, so it might be a little cooler as well. 
And no matter where they fish, whether it's Fort Loudon or Teleco, Tommy, they're going to bring him in in front of Knoxville's finest. Huge crowds at Thompson Bowling Arena. This is going to be a place that you're going to want to beat. They set the record in 2019 for the largest classic attendance. That has been surpassed, but they're looking to take it back. What would it be like, Tommy, if a Tennessee angler, maybe one like Brandon Lester, was to take the 2023 Bassmaster Classic in their home state? That'll be something to consider and to watch for, for sure. No doubt Brandon Lester will be a big favorite this year at the 2023 Classic, and you know the Tennessee fans will go crazy if he can make it happen. There's still plenty more to break down for the upcoming 2023 Classic in Knoxville. Stick with us after the break as we continue our preview of the World Championship. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 2023 Bassmaster Classic Preview Show, where we are now just a few weeks away from the biggest event in all of fishing, kicking off in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're here today getting you set with all the biggest storylines and techniques that will be in play on the Tennessee River. And Ronnie Moore, the last time we were here in 2021, the guys were able to figure out something to get dependable limits of fish. We'll see how that happens this year. Early in the year, the southeast got hit with a huge winter storm, totally changed up the weather and the water conditions every single day of this event. But Tommy, Knoxville such a great fishing community in town, and that is the headwaters of the Tennessee River. We'll be at a lot of places in the 2021 season on the Tennessee River, but this one, Knoxville, is special. There's a lot of water to fish. Fort Loudon Lake and Teleco both make up the Tennessee River here, and somebody closest to takeoff, these two guys, John Cox and Steve Kennedy, really had something special kind of sharing an area, but not really sharing direct water, Tommy. Yeah, just around the corner from each other and the twin spans of that bridge up there, that highway bridge, John Cox never let this place out of his sight. And we got to have him on camera early on day one. He was one of our first cameras and we saw him slowly put it together a couple hours into the day. But then once he got his footing and knew that he could lock a crankbait in his hand, he was really off and running the rest of the event, making it to the final day with that crankbait. <laughs> there we go, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that one will call for sure. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I thought it was a big drum. It was down there spinning. <gasps> Pretty much taking everything available out of this spot right here. Ronnie Moore finishes in third place. A good tournament after kind of a slow start under 10 pounds day one for John Cox, but he was super, super consistent after that. Yeah, and this next region, just a little bit farther south than those two guys, Brandon Carr, Jason Christie, and Greg Hackney, all living in this general region of the Tennessee River. And we saw Christie sneak into the final day cut, and then he had a big bag on the final day to jump up the leaderboard. Yeah. Come on. I missed him, I missed him. Come here, gosh dang it. Yes. Spinnerbait fell out. <laughs> Dude smoked it. The spinnerbait fell out. Well, Jason coming off a less than satisfactory start at our first term of the year, at least by his standards, really gets it going here, gets good points, a top five finish here. Well, one thing you see when you see that watercolor and it's early in the year, you know that's Jason Christie water and a big spinner is going to factor. And that's what he rode to that final day performance to have a big event. And then when we go over just a little bit farther into the creek, somewhere that Brandon Card really lived. And hey, it might say North Carolina on his angler bio, but he just recently moved there. He is a Knoxville native, someone who knows this stretch of the Tennessee River better than anyone in our field. That's how you get it started right there, folks. Pretty solid tournament for Brandon Card, except for day number three. It just kind of fell apart on him, really cost him. It seemed like every single person in the field had a subpar day at some point in this event, whether you had a day one and two and it kept you from making the cut, or whether you had it on day three and it kept you from being in contention on that final day. One guy who had great first two days, though, Greg Hackney. Go oh, on, big one, big one. Come on, baby. Get up in here. Get up in here. God, I watched it. That's the reason right there I'm throwing that Thunder Cricket. I mean, look at that. I mean, freaking eat it. And I got that big rage swimmer on the back. That thing is sexy. 
Sexy. Well, after that, into days three and four, really, Greg Hackney just couldn't get it going. Really puzzling for a lot of us who watched him, and he really didn't think he got onto the right thing until the very end of the final day. This place was puzzling in general, Tommy. A couple of the key areas that we expected to factor, no one. That Concord area, the Turkey Creek area, not many people made it to the final day from there, but our guy, the man who led wire to wire and really did something just dramatic that no one expected. Four days, four limits of smallmouth, and to be able to be as consistent as he was, that was key. That 18 inch limit, if you landed yeah. a keeper smallmouth like Gussie did, yeah, it puts you over the mark and the bar that everyone else set. Yeah, a three pounder on average every time. And, and like we said time and time again, yeah, everyone knew that's the way to win a turn yes. with the most foolproof way. No one thought it could be done. Yeah, four days of that, that's probably the most improbable thing, but he said, hey, let me fish my strengths and I'll do it. Come on. It's going to be close. I'm not that excited because I would like to get rid of these two that are that close. Um, but we made it, so. Ah, all right. So much to look forward to with the 2023 Bassmaster Classic on the Tennessee River. And no doubt the best anglers in the world are going to ooh, figure ooh, it out ooh. somehow and bring the big bass that to the scales. Help. We're all in yeah. for a big treat We're coming getting... up here in a few weeks at the Classic. Stick with Come us on, after the break. So look at some more of the oh. big names to keep an eye on this year at the World Championship. We'll be right back. Got him. Welcome back to the 2023 Bassmaster Classic Preview Show, where we are taking a look ahead to the biggest event on our calendar for every season, the Classic. This year, we're headed to the Tennessee River in Knoxville, and every angler that launches on day one will have big dreams of taking home his career-changing title. Some of these guys, though, probably will have a little more reason to get their hopes up, Ronnie, whether because of the past performances or their local knowledge. Take us through some of those names to watch. Tommy, I'm going to try to keep it as objective as possible, but I'm going to start out with the 2022 Bassmaster Classic champion, Jason Christie. He's the defending champion of this event, albeit on a different lake. One thing about Jason Christie, though, he had been searching and chasing after this trophy for so many years. He has four top tens in the big dance, the Super Bowl of bass fishing. So going back to back, that's in the realm of possibility. We saw Hank Cherry do that a few years ago. Jason Christie, he's got to be the first one you talk about on this list. Now, this guy, he has recently moved from the state of Tennessee, but he is Tennessee's finest. Brandon Card, he lived right here on the banks of Fort Loudon and Teleco in the Knoxville region. He has extensive knowledge on this place. When we came here for the 2021 Bassmaster Lead Series, we were wondering who a local favorite would be. He had already moved to North Carolina, so we had kind of marked him out. I kept him in the back of my mind, and he came away with a top 10. Brandon Card will be one to watch. He really, really had to catch him at the end of 2022 just to make it, and he did so, fishing at home this year in 2023. Another guy who has been so close in Bassmaster Classics, I think every other year he's been in the top three or four for Bassmaster Classics. 2020, he almost won it. 2022, he almost got it done. He came just a pound short, less than a pound short at Lake Hartwell. Stetson Blaylock, and I also pick him not just because of success in this specific event, three-day tournament style, but this time of the year, he normally fares very well in the pre-spawn to spawn time period, and this is when the Tennessee River event falls this year. Another guy, we mentioned him earlier in the shows, Brandon Lester really came on strong this year. He's been ever so consistent over the first nine years of his career. He finished second in Angler of the Year this past season. He won an Elite Series event, and he won a Bassmaster Open. He is on a hot streak. Now we're gonna take him to the Tennessee River in his home state, Knoxville, Tennessee. It's a place that he got a top 10 in the Classic in 2019. I think Brandon Lester's coming into his own, and this Classic may show it. Now, Tommy, these guys are a little bit different. Uh, those are four favorites that I have in mind, but these anglers right here are ones that we need to keep an eye on still. They're kind of uh, on the watch list. Greg Hackney, one of the best anglers in all of bass fishing. He's never won a Bassmaster Classic, though. That's the one thing that's eluded him. I think as we get closer to it being later in March, early April, this is really a time of the year where Greg Hackney shines. I'd expect him to come loaded for bear in this one. Another guy who's never won a Classic that we really should consider, one day he's going to break through 
through, and it won't be a surprise to anyone, but that's Gerald Swindle. Gerald Swindle, he's won Angler of the Year events before. He's so consistent, he's got to get rid of a consistency and learn to be a killer in this event. It's one that we're going to watch for there. Then we think of some other guys, maybe another Tennessee angler to watch for. David Mullins had a really, really solid 2022 campaign, was in the Progressive Angler of the Year hunt for a long time there, faded out the last event or two, but he is one who is getting better and better as the year goes on in his professional career. Another guy I'm going to mention, he's been on a hot streak, had to fight his way into the Classic at the last event of the season in 2022, and that would be Brock Mosley. Brock Mosley, this is his style. He is a winder. He likes to cover water with a lot of moving baits, a different types of reaction baits. He did well in this event in 2021. I'd expect Brock Mosley. He hasn't broke through for an Elite Series win. Maybe the Classic is his. A stacked field of contenders is always the case at the Bassmaster Classic, but wow, this year, there are several guys who could make their case as the favorite to win. This will make for some excellent competition this year, and we can't wait to see it happen. Of course, we hope you'll be there with us if you can, but if not, we'll have it all covered for you live, that's for sure. We're not done, though. Stick with us after the break as we take a look back at the top 10 catches from our last visit to the Tennessee River. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 2023 Bassmaster Classic Preview Show where we are almost set for the World Championship of Bass Fishing coming up here in a few weeks. Today we're getting you set for all the action by taking a look ahead at all the anglers, all the storylines that will be in play at the Tennessee River in Knoxville. What better way to get your blood pumping than by taking a look back at our top 10 catches from our last visit to the Tennessee River. Take it away, Ronnie. Number 10. Starting out with a local boy, Brandon Card, right there from around Knoxville, Tennessee. Got it done and made the top 10 to make the final day. There he is. Knoxville. Good one. Oh, God, it's a good one. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. That's how you get it started right there, folks. Yeah, baby. That's how we get it started, Championship Sunday. Number nine. It wasn't for a slip up earlier in this event. Steve Kennedy may have been your champion. What a great pattern, but it was do or die for him. Had some big fish and some dirtier water that he managed to get to bite. Oh my goodness. He's all hung up in the troll motor. It had got to be one in there. Get out. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> calling my shot. There's got to be one in there. <laughs> Number eight. Speaking of that region of the Tennessee River, John Cox lived not far from Steve Kennedy all tournament long, fishing in dirty water, but he was using crankbaits. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> that one will call. Number seven. You knew with a wire to wire victory that Jeff Gustafson would show up somewhere here in the Tennessee River good, Top 10. Baby. Number seven. What a great smallmouth game plan that he had. Yeah, that's a keeper. That's a nice one. That is a beauty. Yes! Woo! That's the biggest one of the day of the trip so far, I think. Top it in. Number six. There were some killers behind Jeff Gustafson trying to chase him down. One of those stud anglers, Jason Christie, had a good pattern going and really surged on at the end of this event. Come here. Gosh dang it, yes. Spinnerbait fell out. <laughs> Number five. We've already mentioned him in the top 10 from 2021, and he's also one to watch for this year's classic in 2023, Brandon Card, fishing close to his home where he grew up. Literally bait the bait calf. Oh, another good one. Y'all biggin'. Yeah, baby. Woo! <laughs> Look at that one. Number four. 
in 2021, there were a lot of anglers that were do or die, and Scott yeah, Canterbury was one of them, but it did not mean that he couldn't catch a giant fish, and that's what he did. Another freaking big one. Number three. Back over to Steve Kennedy. Had a very, very slow day two in this event. Minimal weight, but had a huge uptick on day three. Check that out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, uh... Number two. We got to put this guy in here one more time. Jeff Gustafson, in awe of his smallmouth performance, 20 fish. Four days of competition, all of them smallmouth. No one else in the field accomplished that. That's a honey. Yes. Woo! Yeah, baby. Number one. Number one on this list and number one in your hearts, Greg Hackney, someone who's on the short list to be a competitor and a winner in a lot of these events. He'll be one to watch in the Classic. He had some big fish in the 2021 Elite here. Go on, big one, big one. Come on, baby. Get up in here, get up in here. God, I watched it. That's the reason right there I'm throwing that Thunder Cricket. I mean, look at that. I mean, freaking eat it. And I got that big red swimmer on the back. That thing is sexy, sexy. Stand down. I don't even have to put a peg in that one's mouth. Yes. Big bass, yeah. big stage, big dreams. That's our motto, and we know that's exactly what will be happening this year at the 2023 Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's almost here, and one of our anglers will hoist that trophy and be crowned our world champion for 2023. We can't wait to see it all unfold. Thank you all for joining us here today on the 2023 Bassmaster Classic Preview Show. We'll see you next time.